okay so we have reached the end of this chapter and this is the final section other notions of graphs and in this section we are going to see some generalizations of the uh, concept of graphs and the first generalization is the notion of hypergraphs and whose definition goes like this a hypergraph is a pair v comma e of is joint steps v and e where the elements of e are non empty subsets of v of any cardinality okay so it looks like a graph that is just like graphs are also pairs of sets a hypergraph is also a pair of sets and that to disjoint sets but of course the hypergraphs are a different concept so let's see what the difference is and for that let us recall the definition of graphs a graph also is a pair of two sets p and e which are disjoint that is their intersection is empty but the crucial condition is this restriction on e which is just uh, a way of expressing this fact that the elements in e are two element subsets of v we know we know this notation that this thing represents the set of all two element subsets of v so e has some of those subsets as its elements and because of this fact the elements in e are called edges that correspond each such edge corresponds to two vertices from v now note one more thing that here we are not saying anything like v has to be a non empty set in fact when v is empty e is also empty and in that case the graph is called the empty graph here however we are not impose first of all we are not imposing such a restriction on e instead the elements in e now has to just be non empty subsets of v and because two element subsets are primarily not being considered so to emphasize that fact the author has written of any cardinality just you have to make sure that the elements you are taking in e have to be non empty subsets of v the empty set considered as a subset of v should not be an element in e in this case okay so because of this non emptiness v here however cannot be empty so unlike the empty graph we do not have any empty hypergraph at least according to this definition so let us now see an example of a hypergraph Uh, which sh shows this uh, difference more concretely so you consider this set say consisting of 1 2 3 and 4 and in place of e say we consider this set
in order to have sets subsets of v of different cardinalities we have considered singleton subset two element subset and also three element subset now we can draw a diagram for this also just like we draw diagrams for graphs here however it will be nothing but just a venn diagram say just like graphs for vertices we are uh, drawing points but the uh, we cannot call edges we can no longer call these things edges these are just subsets this one consists of 2 and 3 so we enclose 2 and 3 within a region and the other one is 1 3 and 4 so this is how this hypergraph looks now note that it may happen that in some hypergraph actually the elements in the set e are two element subsets so that after all it's a graph that possibility is there that is why graphs are special hypergraphs okay so that is the notion of a hypergraph so clearly it's a generalization of the notion of graphs now hypergraphs occur less frequently if we have applications in mind Uh, some other generalizations of the notion of graphs occur much more frequently and the next one that we are now going to see is uh, one such that is the notion of a directed graph or a dyed graph in which the edges have directions or orientations and its definition goes like this a directed graph in short dyed graph is again just like this one a pair B comma E of disjoint sets of vertices and edges. Now note that here we did not say disjoint sets of vertices and edges. because you have seen just now that these things do not naturally correspond to any edge some of them uh, may have uh, three elements some of them may have one element elements coming from p that is vertices here however the author is explicitly saying of vertices and edges so it seems like in a directed graph there will be edges just like how we have edges in ordinary graphs but it's not that simple let's see the full definition and then we will try to understand the definition with an example then only it will become clear sets of vertices and edges and uh, that's not all and maps two maps are there one of them is called init initial from e into v and the other map is called tar terminal also from e into v which assign to each edge 
E in E, keeping in mind that this word age has, uh, I should not say nothing to do with uh, previous ages that we have in graph, but it's not the same as those ordinary ages. By age, we just mean an element of the set E assigns to, and this functions, this maps assigned to each age and initial vertex init of E and a terminal vertex star of E. The age E is said to be from initial E to term E, tar of E. Is it exactly Well, okay, we can write, okay, directed, okay, the age is said to be directed, not just simply said to be. The direction of this age, it's like a vector instead of simply be a scalar, I mean, analogous to that concept. There is a direction. E is said to be directed from init of E to tar of E and now comes the very important and crucial aspect of this definition. Note that there can be or uh, okay a digraph that way it will look better. Note that a digraph can have more than one edge between the same to vertices, multiple edges are allowed in this definition. In this definition of diagram that you have in this text, such edges are called multiple edges if two multiple edges have the same direction from x to y then they are called parallel and there is one more line but I will uh, write it. Let us first see what we have. A directed graph or digraph is again a pair of disjoint sets of vertices V, but vertices of course are just some objects and edges E 
and maps in it and tar which assign to each edge e an initial vertex of e and a terminal vertex of e and the edge e is said to be directed from the initial vertex to from its initial vertex to its terminal vertex and then it is also allowed that we have multiple edges note that a diagram can have more than one edge between the same two vertices such edges are called multiple edges and two multiple edges that have the same direction also they are called parallel now from this definition it is not really clear what the what type of elements e has in it because we have seen just now that in a hypergraph the elements in e there it is mentioned explicitly that the elements in e are non empty subsets of v here however that has not been made explicit some indication however is given by the author of vertices and edges since the word edges has been used so somehow for each edge two vertices are there however those two vertices are uh, distinguished uh, in the sense that one of them is initial and the other one is final so let us now look at an example and try to understand all these things and as example we are just going to consider two vertices but uh edges not just one edge but say this 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 and let us call those two vertices x and y and something else is uh, now i can write that final line in the definition if init of e is equal to tar of e that can also happen that possibility is also allowed then e is called a loop okay so let us now use arrow heads e2 e3 e4 this is how a directed graph or a digraph looks pictorially as a figure it looks like this so you can see that the edges that we have that we are talking about here are not exactly two element subsets for example you cannot call this edge e1 this object e1 is simply not just this set because e1 has a direction also and that direction is brought about or is imposed on e1 by those two functions init and tar and init of e1 is x tar of e1 is y so you may think that okay ordinary set will not represent this fact or will not uh, show it fully so why don't i take an ordered pair because then i have the order the first coordinate will then be the initial vertex and the second one will denote the final uh, terminal vertex fine no problem with that you can do that but note that that still there is a problem 
the problem is that although the author is saying that a digraph is a pair of two sets sets v and e actually e is not an ordinary set why because if you decide to just simply call this ordered pair itself e e1 then what about e2 that is also x comma y so if you think that e is an ordinary set in this case if you try to write e what will be e it just consists of these objects which we are calling edges but if you decide to model these edges using ordered pairs of vertices then you just have this x comma x x comma y x comma y if you just simply write what it uh, would be if you follow this procedure then e would look like this x comma x x comma y x comma y y comma x now what do you do when we have elements repeated in a set that is not a mistake that you can have repeated elements in a set they actually do not mean anything in fact this would be simply written as this x x x y and y x the fact that this element actually appears twice has nothing to do in a set so e is not an ordinary set we do have objects in which uh, that that is collections in which elements are repeated and that matters but they are called multi sets so e actually is a multi set although this fact has not been uh, explicitly mentioned by the author it you can see that it's a consequence of the definition however um, i would say that the author should have been a little more elaborate in the definition but i understand why he hasn't chosen to do so because it's a preliminary chapter in which these notions we are all supposed to already know this from some other source so you understand that uh, the pro see the problem is not how we model the objects edges and it's enough for us if we work with such a diagram because from the diagram it becomes much more clear what the diagram is you know that each edge is not just simply a line but it has a direction and one more thing that is not allowed you see in an ordinary graph you forget about directions in an ordinary graph you cannot have multiple edges like this here you can have also in an ordinary graph you cannot have a an edge starting from a vertex and coming back to it here it is allowed so you can have loops for example here e4 is a loop e1 e2 and e3 are multiple edges and e1 and e2 are parallel because they have the same direction in terms of these two functions parallelism would be equivalent to having the same initial vertex and the same terminal vertex note that none of these two is parallel to e3 because e3 has its initial vertex y and terminal vertex x okay so that is the notion of a diagram now the, after this uh, definition there are some remarks by the author and in the next paragraph the author says that there is no point writing down all these things a directed graph d is an orientation of an undirected graph g you can see that uh, 
loosely speaking the difference between a directed graph and an undirected graph is that in a directed graph the edges have directions in an undirected graph they don't have directions however keep in mind that you cannot just simply remove the directions from here and then call this an undirected graph because such edges are not allowed in an undirected graph but if your directed graph lacks multiple edges and also it lacks loops say it looks like this. So this is your directed graph. Then it cor naturally corresponds to an undirected graph. And that undirected graph is just simply this. That's what the author is saying. What he is saying is that a directed graph T is an orientation of an undirected graph. That means if you have an undirected graph G, you can orient all of its edges to have a directed graph D and this would happen provided that they have the same set of vertices, the same set of undirected edges. Undirected edges means uh, you get the point. Okay. For example, there is an edge between these two vertices in this directed graph there is also a need between the corresponding vertices in this undirected graph. In that sense, if they have the same edges. And also, if the directed graph has no multiple edges or loops. And if this condition is satisfied, initial vertex of E and terminal vertex of E, this set is equal to this set x comma y for every age E equal to x comma x y. If this condition is satisfied along with the fact that the vertex set of G is equal to the vertex set of D and the edge set of G is equal to the edge set of D, then this is the relationship between a directed graph and its corresponding underlying undirected graph. Also, uh, and that's why intuitively such an undirected graph arises uh, or, uh, okay, such an oriented graph, that is a directed graph, arises from an undirected graph simply by directing every edge from one of its ends to the other. So this one from this end to this one, this one from this end to this one. You just give directions to the edges and you get the directed graph from the undirected graph. So that's why oriented graphs are directed graphs without loops or multiple edges. Since such a graph can be formed by orienting each edge of an undirected graph, loops and multiple edges will not appear. There is no relationship between this one and a corresponding one side. This is not an ordinary graph, but this is something else towards which we are now going. And that is the next generalization, the notion of a multi-graph in which this kind of things are allowed but the edges do not have direction. Multigraphs and uh, directed graphs occur uh, quite frequently so that they are important. In fact, they are much more important than hypergraphs. Now, a multigraph, uh, it's 
definition also starts off similarly a multi graph v comma e is a pair of disjoint sets v and e well now also e consists of edges but multiple edges and loops are allowed so how is the author uh, expressing that fact again with a map of vertices and edges together with a map and this map is from the edge set into the union of the vertex set and the set of its two element subsets this map assigns to each edge either one vertex as its end or two vertices as its ends perhaps you can see what is going on here so just like uh, the other notions a multi graph is again a pair of uh, two sets v and e of vertices and edges together with a map now this time what happens is that the edges correspond to each edge corresponds to either one vertex for example this one this vertex this edge corresponds to only one vertex and that's how we set up this map which gives us once you put an edge in this map as input the output is either one vertex which is the sole end of this edge it has only one end it goes out from that end and comes back to it or two vertices for example this edge corresponds to two vertices so when you input this edge in this map you get these two vertices as your output that's why v union v2 and these are called the ends of this vertex this is the only one end of this loop uh, if you call it into and that is why thus multi graphs too can have loops and multiple edges multi graphs you can have loops and multiple edges we may think of a multi graph as a directed graph whose edge directions have been forgotten and that's how we drew that picture right
वे मैं थिंक ऑफ है डायग्राम लेट मी जस्ट सिंपली राइट डायग्राम हुस before i write something else um do you notice something graphs are special types of graphs are a special type of hypergraphs graphs also are a special type of multigraphs but graphs are not a special type of directed graphs directed graphs are something else entirely in an ordinary graph the edges do not have directions or orientations but they do have in a directed graph however there is that relationship between a directed graph and a an ordinary graph if loops and multiple edges are not there so what the author is saying here is just simply this say so this is your directed graph if i do not uh, give any names to the uh, because uh, what the thing is that's what matters then the corresponding multigraph is this we may think of a multigraph as a directed graph as a digraph whose edge directions have been forgotten and uh, the relationship between a directed graph and an ordinary graph that you have in which you have to make sure that there are no multiple edges or loops in this case you do not have to do anything you just have a directed graph you remove the edge orientations you get a multigraph that's it and say so this to vertices are x and y in our multigraph and let us also give this edges names just like directed graphs since these edges also appear in this fashion so they cannot be made to correspond well you can make e1 correspond with x and y but that correspondence will not be unique in the sense that you can come from e1 to x and y but x and y do not give just e1 they are also linked with e2 and e3 so the author says to express that x and y are the ends of e we can write e equal to x you can write this however x and y do, do not determine e uniquely that's what the thing is and uh, so just like this connection you can also make a connection between multigraphs and ordinary graphs so you can say that multigraphs 
uh, or sorry ordinary graphs or just simply graphs are multi graphs without multiple edges or loops and then the author goes on to say that somewhat surprisingly proving a theorem in graph theory more generally for multi graphs than just for graphs is easy easier if you want to prove something for graphs you can also prove a similar statement for multi graphs now what happens is that the it's easier to prove the statement for multi graphs although it seems like it would be much more complicated but um, in many cases that is not the thing so in those cases we are of course going to use multi graphs and especially it's mentioned here such as the notion of plane duality which we will see in chapter chapters 4 and 6 specifically in sections 4.6 and 6.5 where multi graphs arise more naturally than graphs and that's why we are going to consider them and not just consider graphs because we will see that in such situations if you forcefully just restrict yourself to graphs that's an artificial restriction and we are not also going to uh, go into too much of the technical details that is uh, naming the notions for multi graphs then uh, for based on the notions corresponding notions that we have for graphs we will just do things naturally for example here we have explicitly said what edges mean in a directed graph but we understand what they are in that sense there are however a few differences that should be pointed out which uh, i mean you cannot just do all the things with multi graphs and directed graphs exactly the same way you used to do it for graphs and one such difference arises actually this difference makes working with multi graphs and directed graphs easier than with graphs is uh, your edge contraction if you have a multi graph like this in which there are four vertices and you can see the edges these are multiple edges And these are ordinary edges so say you have x and y and let us distinguish this edge let us call it e suppose we want to um, remove e or contract e the technical term is contracting e which amounts to what which amounts to identifying the two vertices x and y as one vertex say a new vertex v e v sub x e now when we do that what do we get these edges of course continue to be like this however x is being identified with y and now we call it a new word we give it a new name ve which is this one so it becomes this but this link between say say this is v this link between v and y stays and that corresponds to this edge also although e now vanishes but this link between x and y also stays and that now becomes this loop so you see that when we contracted edges in a previous section we had to be so careful to 
also for example uh, if you just simply if, if you forget these two edges for a moment then you just have an ordinary graph in that graph if you contract this edge say this one is not there but if you contract this edge that means identify x and y just like what we have done here that you also have to make sure that this edge is also deleted because otherwise it will remain like this which is not allowed in an ordinary graph here however you do not have to be careful since if uh, we have possibility of having multiple edges or loops that is okay that's why contract edge contraction is easier in multi graphs that's the thing so, and which is what the author has written it here elaborately but you understand what what goes on here if you contract the edge e then you just do not have to think of anything you just make sure that you do not lose anything whatever links you had they are still there and there is one more operation uh, which also goes like this and that operation is suppressing a vertex say you consider this multigraph let me draw the figure So it's a multigraph in which uh, you can see that this is also a part. It's a disconnected part, but this whole thing is a multigraph, and it's a multigraph because of the presence of these two ed edges. And also, one more thing that I should mention here: I keep on saying that it's a multigraph because of the presence of multiple edges. Actually, multiple edges or loops need not be present for a graph to be a multigraph. and ordinary graph is also a multigraph but we do have multiple edges here now you can see that you have white edges and i mean sorry white vertices and black vertices so we are going to suppress the white vertices what that means is that we are going to remove the white vertices and in place of the two edges that our edges at that vertex we are going to just have one edge in in place of those two things so if you do that this part of course would vanish because all the three vertices are going to be removed here these two vertices would vanish in their place this edge remains there is one edge and we already had one edge so you have this in place of this vertex and in place of these two edges you are just going to have one edge this edge of course stays just like that and suppressing this white vertex you get a you will are left with a loop so because mar again multiple edges and loops are allowed you do not have to think of anything you do not have to be extra careful in also deleting this this uh, edges incident with this vertex okay so you can do such things 
one more thing that one has to be careful about is this so let me go back to that multigraph so this one now do you recall that our definition of decree of a vertex actually the definition was what in an ordinary graph say you have a vertex like this and there are some edges like this it's a part of an ordinary graph then the number of vertices that are ending sorry the number of edges that are ending at this vertex that number is called the degree of the vertex but due to the fact that in an ordinary graph there are no multiple edges so that number turns out to also be equal to the number of neighbors of that vertex here that is not the case here the degree of this this particular vertex in this multigraph will be 1 2 3 4 5 if if i am calling this vertex v then degree of v is equal to 5 so you can see that these multiple edges are of course each one of them is contributing 1 to the degree but the loop contributes 2 to the degree. Okay, so such things are there. And finally, before actually ending the section, the author says this. It should be pointed out that the authors who usually work with multigraphs, that is, for people, uh, I mean, uh, for whom multigraphs are the main object of study, they call those things graph because it it is cumbersome to keep writing multigraphs, multigraphs. Instead, they call those objects graphs, and in their terminology. Our graphs are called simple graphs. We, however, know what the terminology that we have in this text mean. Okay. For us, graphs are ordinary graphs. Hypergraphs have, uh, in its edge set, if you if you want to call that set edge set or just the set E, you can have non-empty subsets of V of any cardinality. In a digraph, edges have orientations and you have the provision of multiple edges, parallel edges, loops and from a digraph, if you remove the orientations, then you get a multigraph. That's it. And with this, this entire preliminary chapter ends. After this, we have many exercises. So in the next graph theory update, we are going to start solving those exercises as many as we can. Let's see how far we can go. And then only after those things are over, we are going to actually start graph theory properly from this text. So with that, I end this video for tonight. And tomorrow also we have an update. And tomorrow we are going to see what in our cycle of uh, the things we have already once more gone through um, group theory exercises from Galleon. So tomorrow let, let's go back to ring theory exercise from Galleon. That is we are going through integral domain exercises. So we are going to see that tomorrow. So that's just it. So see you tomorrow. Until then this is me Lucifer from a mathematical room. Have a nice night.